Caitlin, who I don't know if Caitlin Here she is. Is. <laughs> <laughs> is going to read her poem. So let me just say a little bit. Uh, Margaret Stoner is the poet. Uh, she's a writer from Indianapolis who currently lives in Israel. And she's a freelance writer for the arts and entertainment section of the Jerusalem Post and a student of Hebrew and Arabic. So thank you, Caitlin. Sure, thank you. Good, yeah. Just a little bit of a personal note on Marty. She's um, one of my best friends. I've known her since we were babies. Our moms have been best friends since they were 14. And she's like a soul sister to me, so it feels correct that I should share a little bit of her soul with you guys. Um, so this poem is entitled, The Earth Nurtures What is Frozen and White. I'm also very nervous. <laughs> oh, you're fine. Um, a man holds my arm next drags his fingers up my wrist and wraps them around the base of my elbow. You have no scars. July 25th, 2000. I want to sit on a front porch and watch bees make honey. I want to swing on a bench on that porch when it rains. I want to shear sheep, save a little wool in my pocket, wash it in the river, and hang it in my window to sparkle. There are chickens and ducks, and one day an egg will be abandoned. I will hold it to keep it warm. I am amputating a tree's rotting limb. It splits in the wrong place and splinters fly into the sky. March 23rd, 2008. There are many kinds of trees that bleed when you cut them, especially the ficus family. When trees are cut, they excrete sap to seal the wound. One winter, my father took me to the forest to tap maple trees for syrup. I sliced my finger with the end of a nail and begged him to take me home early. We tapped six, six trees that day and never returned to collect the syrup. Dark red leaks from the wound, the, wo the wood sticky and raw. I hack at the edges until they are smooth. The sound of splitting bone will ring for days in my ears. Even your wrists stay white in summer. May 16th, 2004. A white egg stolen from a chicken's nest, cotton balls, a small light bulb my mother's shoebox. I held it to my chest for 14 days. It slipped from my hands on the living room floor. A small beak, thin blood-soaked feathers, clear skin. He digs a pit in the sand and I tear pages from my book. We prop small twigs up around a ball of crumpled paper. He cups his hands and blows until the fire rises. You have dark caves under your eyes. July 14, 2009. Today I read that the white desert split and swallowed a man. This is a true story. As a hiker peeled salt sickles from the side of a small hole, the earth opened up and ate him. He scribbled his will on an old postcard. I wonder what he thought about as he watched the night come and go. The newspaper reported that drought, chemicals, and population growth put stress on the walls of the sea. 14 hours later, he was rescued. Your skin is like soft, is, your skin is soft like leather, but that skin too, then like flour, like fine white clay. 1998, my science experiment. Red light into blue light into green light. Where they meet, white light. But where did the colors go? Look here, in the sand. There are many things that wouldn't be different if that man was never found. His eyes would have sunk and sunk his skull and pelvis would become caves for snakes to hide in. Wet salt and wind would turn his skin to leather, his bones to frozen sticks, the whole to solid, cold whiteness. Nothing is left of what you were, of what you first were. July 14, 2009. Look, ice changes things. In the Bible, the earth swelled before it swallowed Korach. The hiker swelled, and the ice swelled, and his bones swelled, and I think it was God who swallowed it all. The body you had five years ago does not exist today. Not your bones, your skin, nothing.
less than that. Um, and some are great, and they really stick with you. And the piece by Jennifer McGaha was one of the latter. Um, so I'm going to read her bio. A native of the western North Carolina mountains, Jennifer McGaha writes nonfiction and literary nonfiction with an edge. She also teaches part-time at Broward College and serves as creative nonfiction editor for the, Bis the Pisca Review, a national literary journal based at the college. Um, welcome, Jennifer. I'm from Western North Carolina. 